Uh, I'm not saying that you construct reality in a way that it's paranormal where you choose it. That's not the point here. The point here, is, I mean, that could be, but I would not have the expertise to comment on that. The point is, is that our best theorization of these is just to say they are, more than anything, constructions of consciousness. Now, do they come from this? That is very unknown if they do. I mean, maybe that's the dream. We can show that. But we're very far from doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the mic, right. Um, I guess I just have a problem with the, um, the motion of the bullet here. Okay. So you're saying you just see the bullet still every, you know, you can take millions of snapshots from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the difference between point, and a, B, point and B, it has moved in time and space to a different point. So to me, there still is motion, regardless okay, right, of whether it's still right. this particular. You're saying if you had, um, let's say we had a camera that could take infinite snapshots. So literally every position, which is a conscious construction, uh, every position is filmed. Uh, you've got two choices to say, since each of those positions is going to be, in that case, would be perfectly still. Uh, you've got two choices, either to say it's the same bullet moving through time, which is what you're saying, and therefore it's generated out of stillness, or you can stick to the, 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 your experience, the all-important sort of um, grounding of science and hopefully philosophy is uh, would show you that actually you don't ever see motion. You see a bullet, a bullet, a bullet. Now they're the same bullet, they're different bullets. Um, the Buddhist says that every bullet is a new bullet. Every exist, every moment of reality is completely new. Uh, if anybody studied the French philosopher Deleuze, he comes up, he comes to a lot of similar points as this, such as that one. Uh, so you, so to sum up. Well, somebody like me, would, a Buddhist like me would say, you believe there's motion just because you've been told and just because you think you've seen motion through your whole life. But the bullet example with the infinite snapshots would show you that there is no motion. And if you uh, reject that direct empirical experience you're having of the bullet's stillness, then you're just uh, deluding yourself because of your past experience of thinking that there's motion. If you could see everything the way the infinite snapshot camera does, through, from the first moment of your life till now, you would not have a concept of motion, is the idea. Um, does that make sense? I, yeah, um, the article that I have on my website called Our Theory of Time is a good, that has a lot to do with some of that, so. It's pretty readable, especially the conclusion. Uh, was there, I thought I saw another handout. Oh, okay, yeah. So I follow this and I like it very much, but hey, you know, I just have a question. So. I mean, it's a bit like Hollywood or right. So when Hollywood make a movie, yep, it's still a, shots. It's a good representation. Of, mm -hmm. Yeah, philosophers use reality. that sometimes. So, so now, so what? Um, now, we, if, if these these moments, can, uh, as I understand it, are, they come, they go, and let's forget time. It's just the sequence of Im let's say images. But yeah, so time doesn't is, exist on this scenario. Is, why is there a sequence if we have uh, no connection between them? So, in other words. Why does the right? Why do we have a bullet here, a bullet mm -hmm. there, and perhaps a bullet here? So, mm -hmm. you know, what connects? Yes. Why doesn't the bullet turn into a turtle? If there is no connection, why is each moment, as it as it comes from, let's say, energy mm -hmm. or, you know, it just flashes in and out existence, which right. I'm, I'm quite happy with. Mm -hmm. But what I'm not, I still have the problem with. Is, um, firstly, if we have a coherence in a thought. Is is that basically are we are we just uh, is that a, a, do we generate the absurdity that the bullet is moving, or how can we actually do we have an influence in it, and why does the bullet not just appear in random? Yeah, you're, you know? these are all the it's very well thought out question. Obviously, uh, um, if this is what reality looks like, uh, this is utterly random. Every Buddhist atom comes from nothing. So it comes from nothing. Uh, th this I showed in that Art Theory article. That, and th this is, it's a, that's a, the Buddhist position also. That wasn't held by all Buddhists in the era I'm thinking of, which was uh, pre-classical, late pre-classical India. Um, but it definitely was held, and I show in that article that it appears to be the, it's definitely the best position. Uh, 
so that would be analogous to, you know, if you're looking at virtual particles, you're quote, looking at, unquote, virtual particles in your physics lab. They just come up, you know, where do they come from? Uh, what caused them? It seems that causation and, you know, generation aren't the best description. Ran utter randomness is. So then your question is, why do I see, why does my camera have a bullet here, 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 here? Um, the answer to that question would, of course, be, Found if you could answer this question, how does consciousness exist? That's the, one of the ultimate mysteries in acad academia today. As far as I know, nobody really has a clue. Um, there are ideas, good theorization and good research going on, but it's a huge mystery. So how does consciousness exist? And secondly, how does it construct uh, images that are, have a rhythm, have, a, or have predictability? Um, you know, all of Division Two is, is the domain of empirical science. It's, it has causation. The causation is describable in terms of absurdity. Uh, but nevertheless, causation is, is, if you're a human living, you know, spontaneously finding yourself in, in Division Two reality, as we all have, uh, why are there rhythms? When I set my alarm clock at 10 at night, why does it go off at 6 a.m.? When I shoot the bullet, why doesn't it fly that way or turn into a turtle or something? Um, that would be to find a, the key to that is found in how consciousness constructs reality. How you could, if you could, you can find out one, you find the other. I would think, which I wouldn't be able to do, unfortunately. So if we develop the mind sufficiently. If you develop your mind sufficiently, you would see that this, this is what you'd see in this room. And you would see that the surfaces and colors of empirical reality are the sort of residue that is insignificant. Which that has to do with Buddhist ethics, which I'm going to go into in a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, you would, uh, um, yeah, this becomes all important. And this is, every single person in this room is identical to this. And if you don't see that, it's just because you haven't taken the correct uh, measures to to understand nirvanic empiricism. Does that make sense? That was, that was a really good question. So what hand do we have in it? I don't know. Do we fully construct consciousness? Um, a lot of people want to say, you know, Bohr's physics would imply that. I have no, I have no opinion on that at all. Because I, yeah, definitely. That's a very controversial issue. Um, or is it, did, or did the moments of consciousness just happen to us out of our control? That's probably the position I personally hold. That's a very Buddhistic position, um, where control is to be let go. Uh, reality happens, and empirical reality is insignificant compared to ultimate reality. Yeah. So, um, are you familiar with the correspondence principle? A little bit. Okay, so it's the idea. Maybe give me a for one anyone sentence. Else, and for anyone else that may not be involved with quantum very much, it's just the idea that that if if quantum mechanics is supposed to be right, then as in the limit that things you know built of quantum you know particles or quantum stuff. become very large, they have to mathematically agree with you know the things that we see on the macro scale like. Like if I throw a ball, then it has to obey the trajectories, you know, by Newton's laws, yeah, but that sort of thing. We're pretty so, far from that, though. That's true. Yeah. And so, actually, what I was just wondering if you could, if you could comment at all about, is there anything like a correspondence principle involved in this? No. In this it, atom is it would be an anti-correspondence. An anti-correspondence. Yeah. It would be there is a specific move to reject time, space, and matter. And uh, there's a quote on, uh, that I actually put on the Wikipedia site under Buddhist atomism, uh, no, under the philosophy of presentism. Uh, that uh, is from Trubatsky. It says that um, time does not exist. There's only the uh, irreducible moment. Uh, that's, that's just one example. Space, time. I mean, there's, yeah. So anti-correspondence would be the philosophy there. You, um, it's specifically called neurological nihilism. It's as if everything. It, that means that things with parts uh, don't exist. So um, notice that division two over here. One of its uh, issues is that they're composite items. Actually, everything follows from that. That's a key Indian Buddhist principle that composite items don't exist. And the whole uh, philosophy of Buddhist atomism comes from that, right there. And, and, and yet, if we, how do, you, how, do you, how do we explain measurables then? Like if I, say, if I measure my mass and someone, or if I measure a bowling ball, uh -huh. 
and you measure a bowling ball, and uh -huh. someone else measures a bowling ball all on different scales all around the world, we come up with the same number. Yeah. Yeah, right. That, so the, according to the Buddhist position, 